In the Kitchen with WSLS 10 News, sponsored by FNS Building Innovations. Build smart, build right. Signs of spring are everywhere and we're really excited here in Southwest Virginia because the hummingbirds are starting to migrate our way and here to talk about that is Haley Olson Hodges and Levi Syverson with the Southwest Virginia Wildlife Center. Thanks so much for being here yeah, today. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. The kind of the border between March and April is when you first start seeing the early migrants of the ruby throated hummingbird come through our area. It doesn't mean that they're coming through in full force, but the ones who are a little bit early are coming through and especially since we're still having some cold weather other hummingbird feeders can really help, especially in years when we have cold snaps where we have the flowers boom, bloom and then they die off. Hummingbird feeders, you know, are not going to save the species, but they do help some, you know, stragglers that are struggling, you know, um, you know, as they start to migrate. We will see more into April, but if you want to attract hummingbirds and keep them in your yard, the best thing to do is to put your feeders out now. Something that you always talk about every year is not to buy hummingbird feeder with the red dye, that it's yes. it's yes. Uh, not a great mixture for them. No. <laughs> yeah. So the red, the red of the feeder itself is enough to attract them. And when you think about it, you know, their natural food, flower nectar, is not red. It's the flower itself that attracts them. So it's really not necessary. Um, it's, it can just do more harm than good. Well, we don't want to do that. And yeah. you have some simple solutions for us to be able to make <laughs> our own at home and save a little bit of money. Yes, too. yes. Mm -hmm. um, it's got a nice little ant guard. So you can fill this with water and that helps keep the ants out of it. You're only going to want to fill it like this much. The biggest thing about these is that they have to be changed. The water has to be changed every three to five days. Otherwise, you can actually injure, cause infection, disease spreading, stuff like that. So to make it, you're gonna want uh, granulated white sugar. Uh, you really don't want raw sugar or brown sugar. And it's one part sugar to four parts water. Okay. So I'm just gonna pour that in there. And you do wanna boil this. So we're not boiling it today, but. Pretend you boil the water and then put the sugar yes. in. Yes. yes. Yep, just whisk that up real nice and good. And because it'll be hot, as you boil it, you should see all of the sugar dissolve. And once all the sugar dissolves, then you're then you're good. Yep. And you can store it in a mason jar for quite a while, actually. Just keep it in your fridge. Mm -hmm. um, but what you do is when you have the jar, you always want to pick it up and shake it. And so this is all nice and clear. I mean, it is water. Yeah. But the nectar should could, should still be that, that clear. And the other thing that's really important about feeders on the yeah. hind end of everything as yeah. well. Um, cleaning. Cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. Yes. Again, as I just said. Um, this solution, um, especially in the sun, you, you want to keep your feeders out of direct sunlight. Um, it grows mold and that can kill and harm the birds and uh, really do some damage to them. So it's really, really, really important that you take it down and deep clean it w at least once a week. Um, the best way to clean them um, is with hot water, um, no soap. Um, so we just get a nice bottle brush and just really with hot water, just really scrub every corner. Um, and especially like I like to use a toothbrush. Oh yeah. Like really get in these holes here, scrub around the nooks and crannies. And this actually comes apart here. So we're gonna get in every nook and cranny in here. We don't want any mold or slimy residue building up in here. Um, now, if you find mold in your feeder, it's not the end of the world. Um, all you have to do is instead of using hot water, you need to use a bleach, a diluted bleach solution. So it's one part bleach to nine parts water. And what you do is you scrub with that really, really well, and you have to let it dry completely. That's very, very important for the bleach to do the thing it does to kill the mold. Um, and then you have to rinse it really, really, really well after it dries. Because we don't want the hummingbirds to be drinking yes. bleach residue. No, yes. That's not no we don't. <laughs> no, we don't. Yeah. Well, well, this is such wonderful information. I know a lot of our viewers are going to be really excited about this as we eagerly wait for these little birds to come back. Mm -hmm. So we'll have all of these step-by-step -step instructions on our website at WSLS.com. Perfect.